family, welcome to our live stream. We're so excited you've taken some time out of your busy schedule to watch this message. We pray that it's encouraging and that it blesses you completely. We're going to begin shortly, so tune in. God bless. Welcome to church. We're so glad that you chose to join us here today. If this is your first or second time here, or you've never filled out a connection card, we just want to get connected with you. So go ahead and fill it out. Everything we do here at LifePoint is thanks to our incredible team. You've heard Pastor say before, this is not a cruise ship, it's a rowboat. So if you're interested in giving your time and talents back to the Lord, go ahead and email one of our leaders. Social media is an incredible resource that we have available to us, and it's a great way to stay connected throughout the week. So if you have Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, go ahead and follow, like, and subscribe. Also, if any of the content speaks to you, feel free to share that with your friends and family. And just in case you didn't know, LifePoint Church has an app where you can give, send in prayer requests, and even view our latest messages. So we want to encourage you to download that today. Parents, 
kids, if you have a child between the ages of six months old to fifth grade, we have an incredible kids ministry that wants to partner with you in leading this next generation and teaching them about Jesus in a way that's relatable to them. So if you have a child between the ages of six months old to fifth grade, please check them in today. Also, if you have a child less than six months old and they start to get a little fussy during service, we want to encourage you to take them to the mother baby room where you can still enjoy service and be with your child. To all the ladies in the house, Shine is back January 17th at 7 p.m. It's gonna be an amazing time of fellowship, growth. We're gonna hear an awesome word. This is a perfect night to invite your mom, invite your sister, invite your grandma, and don't forget to register on the LifePoint app. Connect group season is here, and you might be asking yourself, what are connect groups? Well, connect groups are where we get to turn these rows into circles. We get to go deeper into the word and grow in our relationship with God and with each other in community. There's connect groups for every season of life. You can register through the LifePoint app. They will be starting January 29th. LifePoint Service is having a prayer night January 26th at 7 p.m. We know that there is power in prayer and one way that we can serve our community is by lifting them up in prayer. If you're interested in being part of LifePoint Serves this year and finding more about our upcoming outreach events, then email me at jennifer at lpc.is. The message is going to begin very soon, but before that, prepare your hearts and minds and get ready to receive what the Lord has in store for you today. God had for another day of the Lord that would come after this. A day when God would visit his people again. And this would be a day of mercy for God's people instead of a day of judgment. For this time, he would not come as a plague against them, but as a blessing that dwell in their midst. What the locust ate, he would remake. What the armies laid to waste, he would recreate. But what would make this day of the Lord truly great is not just that God would pour out wine and oil, not just that he would pour out the harvest time rain. On that day of the Lord, he would pour out something different. On that day, God would pour out his spirit. Access to God's presence would become unprecedented. Plagues of separation that covered the temple would be removed as God's spirit came to dwell with his people. This was the day of the Lord, Joel promised. A day when mercy would shine through their judgment. When the destruction of their enemies would bring salvation through the most catastrophic event. And so Joel told those who faced this day's advent to repent and lament for the Lord would relent. God bless you. Good morning. Let me welcome everybody joining us online. Drop us a note. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Happy New Year. You guys good? You awake? You should be, right? Um, so my wife and my daughter and myself, we were in China last week traveling. It had been eight years since we were there, and uh, that's far too long, 
right? And, you know, um, there's nothing like letting your mother-in-law just tell you how bad you are for not, for not coming around for eight years. There's not a lot to say. You just hang your head in shame. She's about this big. And uh, I just say, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry, I'm a loser, and you're a winner, right? And she is the boss, right? And uh, it's really, really incredible to hang out. Thank you guys for being here, not just today, but last week. And I want to say a special thank you to the team for holding it down. We have such a great team here um, in and out. Pastor Mike for bringing a word last week, right? Praise God. And uh, as always, you guys just, just make it happen week in and week out. It's really, really incredible to be able to, to just step out and know, you know, it, it's God's church and he's doing it. I know a lot happens in the New Year, and so I wasn't here for that first kind of like first, you know, New Year sermon to like New Year, New Me, you know, all of that stuff. I don't like to say that anyway. What I'd like to say is like, hey, it is a new year, right? And hopefully it's, it's not just a whole new you, but an improving you. We're making progress, right, is what it's about steps. You're probably not going to be perfect this year. Uh, you're probably not going to be perfect today. You probably have messed up a lot already today, but are you progressing? Are you getting better? Are you becoming more like Jesus? But the key to that really is to lean into the Lord because the Lord doesn't have to get better. He's just perfect, right? And the same God that we talk about in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis is the same God that lives inside of you now. The same Holy Spirit that hovered right at the beginning over the waters is the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of you with the same power, with the same um, push forward, the same fire that should be inside of you. Nothing changes. God doesn't change. Anybody excited that the same God still reigns today as he always has? That excites me. So we're going to dive in today. If you got your Bibles, uh, make sure you bring your Bible with you, carry it with you. Uh, read it, get it inside of you, get a plan, make sure that you are reading it. I think you need more than a verse a day, but if you want to start with a verse a day, praise God. Then, you know, like I said, get a little bit better. Get two verses, three verses, ten verses, ten chapters. Just read it. It's important. We're going to start a brand new series today in the book of Joel. And I want to say a few things about it while you turn there. Uh, incredible, incredible book. There's a lot packed in here. It's intense. There's a lot of imagery but while you're turning there, before I talk about it too much, I want to say a few things about it. How many of you were here for New Year's, the 31st, as we worshiped in the New Year? That was a ton of fun, by the way. Uh, I grew up doing watch night services, old school, you know, just kind of sit there until like 3 o'clock in the morning, praising God. And so it was fun to just worship in the New Year. Um, one of the things that I said, and then I preached this message, we will not be shaken. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And I said that night, I said, I'm not a prophet, but the world is going to shake. And the next day, there was this giant earthquake in Japan. <laughs> and so everybody was sending me messages and emails like, oh, you are a prophet. And I'm like, no, no, not a prophet. Just, I, I wasn't necessarily talking about earthquakes, although that's part of it. What I was talking about is society at large shaking. Because the devil loves chaos. The devil loves disorder. He loves frustration and disruption. But God is the God of order. And this is why we talk a lot about being rooted and grounded or building your life in Christ. And I, I quoted from Hebrews chapter 11 said that Abraham went looking for a city whose foundation is the Lord. That's a powerful verse. And so I think you're here today because you're trying to start the new year saying we are doing this. And whether it was something negative that happened that caused you to say, hey, i got to get back to church, or the new year, or the birth of a child, whatever it was, I'm so glad you're here. I'm really glad. It matters if you're here. And if you will make the decision to be in church every Sunday today, you don't have to make it next week. You will simplify your life by making decisions and, and, and resolve to follow through with them. So... How many of you will be in church next week? Make the decision today, yeah, right? So you already made a decision. So next week when you wake up, it's like, should we go to Mario's for breakfast or should we go to church? You already know you should go to church. The decision has been made, right? So we're going to do this thing. So we're leaning in here. We're putting down roots, and we will not be shaken. So as we look at this stuff, the shaking in the world, the ideologies, the confusion, the chaos, what does it mean for us? Well, I know what it means for me. My job is to prepare you to equip the equip you, the saints, to do the work of the ministry because there's a lot of work to be done. The Bible tells us very clearly that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, the laborers are few. 
So we look around homestead, like, these people need Jesus. Yeah, that's why you're there. That's why Life, Life Point is here to share the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are proclaimers of the good news. We are pushing out truth. And so we want to equip you, and it's important that you're here every week. Now, as we look at the, the, the book of Joel and, and the imagery, and it can be scary at times, right? But listen, I will tell you something very clearly. I'm going to mention this several times today. There's no need to be scared. The people who aren't ready for Jesus to come back get scared. The people who are ready are super excited about everything that's coming. So get yourselves ready. There's not, no need to be scared. There is a huge need to be ready. Amen. Hey man, estás listo? You ready to go? We're going to do this thing? It needs to happen. You need to be ready. So get your Bibles open. One of the key phrases that we see, not just in Joel, but over some of the other prophets, is this phrase, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. It's a, it's a strong phrase. It can be very, very scary. And I want to give you an overview today, and then we'll dive in, hopefully, through the first 12 verses. Um, who wrote this book? Joel wrote this book. Uh, we know few details about him. Uh, it says in the first verse that he uh, was the son of Bethuel. Uh, he preached. He preached to the people of Judah, which was the southern kingdom, was a split kingdom, Israel and Judah. He was preaching to the people of Judah. He had a great deal of interest in Jerusalem. He talked about priests. He talked about the temple. So he obviously knew something of worship and what went down in the worship, or at least uh, the, the familiarity of it. He he liked to talk about nature. He uses the plague of the locusts, but he also talked about the sun and the moon. And he's got some very quotable verses. One of the most quoted is, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's good news. That's not, that's not scary news. That's, that's fantastic news that all have accessibility to the Lord. I'll pour out my spirit upon some flesh? No, all flesh. So he's poured out. The question is, will you receive it or not? Will you allow him to work inside of you? Will, he, will you allow him to transform your heart and your mind? So he, he, he draws upon the natural imagery, the sun, the moon, the grass, the locusts, the, the harvest, all of these things, right? And an overarching kind of theme in this is that he understood that truth was paramount for us. That we preach this and we preach it with intensity because it matters. It matters. The Lord matters. The day of the Lord matters. And we're trying to, to, to preach this so that people will be saved. But truth absolutely has an impact on our world. It has an impact on you. It has an impact in our church, in, in this city, in, in the future. It absolutely has an impact. We don't know exactly the dating of the book of Joel. It remains one of uh, scholars' uh, baffling moments that they can't understand because he didn't give so many details. One particular uh, author or theologian said that maybe it was because there was a time when one of the kings was too young to rule. Joash was too, too young to rule, so Jehoiada ruled in his place. So maybe he didn't list the king there. It's, it's been thought that he was around the time of Ezra, Nehemiah, that he prophesied during this time. So, but we don't know specifically, but he focuses on prophetic judgment. And you're like, man, I, can, I came at the beginning of the year to hear about judgment. Absolutely, you came to hear about judgment. And you came to hear about salvation, too, and, and worship. And, and, and the fact that what I mentioned earlier, that the, his familiarity with the worship in the t temple suggests that maybe he lived right there in the proximity of Jerusalem itself. And let me tell you something. You, you absolutely, uh, it doesn't matter if you live out in the country in the Redlands or here, there, or there but it absolutely matters if you, if you have a heart of worship and you live close to Jesus. And, and that is central to your life, to worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So why is this so important? Why are we, why are we unpacking this Old Testament prophetic book for today? Well, it absolutely matters. One, it's part of canonized scripture. And um, we're, we're looking at this day of the Lord, and I do believe the day of the Lord is coming. It wasn't just Obadiah who mentioned it, but um, right here we talk about Thess Thessalonians. Paul writes about it. Second Peter, we talked a little bit about it. But, but what, he, what, what I want you to get in this is that in all of the intensity that I'm going to talk about today and over the next several weeks, that he leans into this deep, deep message. It's right there in all of it that the reason he's preaching is because there is a hope of repentance. Like, what are we doing otherwise? Literally, what are we even here for if we don't have a hope that God's going to save us? Like, what are, what are we doing? Are we just gathering together to, 
sing songs? No. It's like, it has to be bigger than that. You're here because there's hope. And for some of you, that hope is giant and, and the faith is big and you just can't wait to the day. And others of you are like, it's, it's flickering, but life has just smashed you down over and over again. And you're just like, you're kind of breathing, but you, you feel like you're drowning and somebody just keeps handing you stuff. That's what life feels like for you. Maybe the past decade or year or a couple of months, but there's a, there's a message of hope always in this. Now, he refers to a, a terrible plague, a histor historical plague of locusts, and he uses this, and obviously it, it impacted society at this place greatly. I mean, massive, massive generational impact, and he uses this to kind of tap into. We have the same kind of stuff here, whether it's night of September 11th, right, 2001, 9-11, or if it's COVID or certain type of events, what is this? What we see is that there's a judgment. There's, there's judgment that's actively happening, right? And then there's, there's judgment on, on foreign nations or and judgment individually. But what he's saying is that there is a bigger judgment coming. There is a bigger judgment coming. And if you thought a bunch of insects that wiped out all the crops and all the trees and stripped the bark bare and pulled them to white. If you thought that was bad, you don't want to be left out on the last day. So how do we, how do we apply this? How do we, how do we apply the, the vivid descriptions that Joel writes with? And how do we get this? Well, what we do is we, we let it awaken us. We, we awaken. Like we wake up. Because a lot of it, I think, I think maybe, as I said on the 31st and in, in some of Second Peter's that we've lost some reverence, we've lost some awe, we've lost the fear of hell. Lost it, right? Lost the fear of judgment and wrath and really just disappointing God. I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want our church to disappoint him. And this plague that he mentions was unique. It was catastrophic. It was generational. It was, it, he likens it to several things. But, but it's important, and I want to go back to this, and I want you to hear this before we start diving in, that the truth is paramount. Truth impacts us incredibly. This is why society tries to distort the truth, right? The world is trying absolutely to do it. You know who else knows the truth? The devil. This is why he's always trying to twist it. And so over the past decade or maybe the last score of years, it, you've heard people more and more say, oh, well, that's your truth. Or live your truth or live their truth or their, whatever. That's nonsense. There's only one truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, you can't get to the Father except through him. So this is why society is trying to twist it into whether it's gender ideology or this or, or whatever. And, and I'm not putting my faith in anything or any system. I put my faith in God and God alone, right? But the, the, the problem <laughs> is that, that truth, right, you can't, you can't twist it. You can, you can live in la-la land if you want. Right? You can try to twist it, but the truth is the truth. That's all it is. But what you can do is you can reject the truth. And we say very often here that people will love you or hate you for the truth. But you give it to them either way. And so when we, we come here and we preach with intensity and we preach the word of God, because why? Because there's a consequence for rejecting the truth. Consequences aren't always bad. You know this, right? Consequences, there's also good consequences. Those are the results of the decisions that you make. So it's, it's not necessarily it's always bad. We feel like consequences is such a negative word. I remember one time I got in trouble in school. I still remember the sentence that I had to write 1,000 times. Anybody write sentences when you were a kid? I don't think anybody does that anymore, right? They need to, some of you need to start writing some sentences. Can't even write cursive anymore. What happened? I will obey the rules of the classroom or I will pay the consequences. I still remember the sentence, right? driven into my head, right? But consequences, um, yes, for rejecting the truth or not receiving or pushing away the truth. But there's also consequences for receiving it. Those are the good consequences. Those are the results of saying, I have you in my life, Lord. I'm building my life upon you. Everything will be okay. I will not be shaken as the world around me shakens. I will be okay.
okay, so as we open up this first chapter, we see the, the, the direct results of a, a severe plague. It swept over the land. It destroyed the produce and, and wiped out everything. And yet he said, if you thought that was bad, just wait till the destructive day of the Lord. Joel chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Bethuel. And he says this in verse 2, hear this, you elders. Give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? Now, the word came to Joel, right? God, I, I, I think, uses people at times to speak, right? We have the word of the Lord to us. But some of you have heard words from the Lord. He speaks to you. He guides you. He directs you. He wants to lead you like that. Maybe it's not the audible voice. But as you study, as you pray, as you listen in this next season, I, I know the Lord is speaking but he says to the elders, right, hear this, listen up, tune your ear. Right? There were times when the psalmist prayed to, to, to the Lord. The Lord, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, hear my voice. Let thy, let thy voice be tuned to the ear of my supplication, David cried at one point, I think Psalm chapter 130, God tune your ear, but that's, that's not really what needs to happen. God hears our cry. What we need to do is we need to turn our ear to his voice because he's speaking, and he's speaking with clarity for us in this next season. So elders, we have an elders board here, but not everybody who is an elder in this room or in this church is on the board, right? Some of you are seasoned, you've been dialed in, you study the word of God, you help pastor people, you help lead people, you help decide people, you're elders in the community. Now you can't be a 10-year-old elder. You can't be. You don't have any years, you don't have any experience in this thing. I, like I love you in your youth and Paul told Timothy, let no man despise thy youth, but you have to get some years on you. But the elders need to listen too. They need to listen too. But not just the elders and not just the young people. It says give you all inhabitants of the land. Everybody needs to listen up. And the thing about calamity, that's an old King James word. Or the, the, the thing about struggle or the thing about crisis is that it gets people's attention. But as more and more crisis happens and more and more struggle happens, people become numb to it. So years ago when World War I would happen, people were dialed into church, right? World War II happened. The Vietnam, September 11th, COVID. People have just, so what? So what? And he says this, he asks this rhetorical question here, has, has such a thing happened again? He's talking about a plague of locusts that literally annihilated. We'll see here in just a minute how bad it was. He said, has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? What he's saying is, do you remember anything this bad before? How many of you sat there during COVID and said, I've never seen anything like this before. I've never seen anything shut down, wipe out, close down, everybody go to your house. Everybody, like What? It was crazy town, right? And we know and we learned a lot through this. And there's some things that we would all do differently this time around. And, and, and praise God for our, our learning ability. But have you seen such a thing? Have you seen such a thing? And if you think that was bad, right? So he's speaking to the civil leaders. He's speaking to the judges. He's speaking to the politicians. He's speaking to the local people. He's speaking to the worshipers. He's speaking to the kids. He's speaking to every, everybody. Anybody who has an ear. Let them hear. Open your ears. The problem is your ears might be open. You just have too many things going inside of them at once. Got the radio going. Got the TV going. Got a podcast going. Got the kids going. Got the wife going. Got the husband going. Thought you were going to get off, husbands. <laughs> you guys can talk too. Well, I've been in South Florida long enough to know, right? Tune your ear. One of the best things that you can do is consecrate time for the Lord. One of the best times to do that, early morning. I know a lot of guys are like, they go home and work. And they come home and the wives have been with the kids. And they come home and like, they're like, I'm going to go to the gym. And she's like, you can't go to the gym. I've been with the kids all day. I need some time to myself. And so I talk to these guys and I say, you're not going to want to hear this, but you know when your time to go to the gym is? About 4.30 in the morning. That's your time to go to the gym. 
And they're like, I don't want to go at that time. I'm tired. And I'm like, I know. But that's your time. That's what it's got. Because everybody's got to make some sacrifice. You want to do what you want to do. But listen, if you want to get close to the Lord, you need to make some sacrifice. And if you have a family and you have a life, you better get that on the front end. Because soon as stuff starts happening, then stuff starts happening. Because when the kids get up and everything's gone, you got to pack the lunches and get up. Everybody's running behind, five minutes behind. Come on, hurry up. We're going to be late. Well, of course you're going to be late. You started the day late. You hit snooze ten times. <laughs> Quit hitting snooze. Don't do that. I tell you this every year. Stop hitting snooze. When the alarm goes off, get up. That's not good sleep. You're not helping yourself. Oh, just give me five more minutes. Well, five more minutes for what? Get up, right? Drink your coffee. Let's go, right? Get after it. But let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm inviting you. I'm, I'm not asking. I'm, I'm looking at all of you right now. And I'm inviting you to Sunday morning prayer, 530, right here. There are about 20 of us in here this morning seeking the Lord. You're like, 530 is early. Yeah, I know it's early. Some of you will get up at 3 o'clock to go fishing. You won't come to 5.30 to speak to the Lord? No, oh, that didn't, you didn't like that too much. Sorry about that. 5.30. We'll be here next week, Lord willing. 3 says, tell, it, tell your children of it. Tell your children of this. Let your children tell their children, and their children tell another generation. This is, this is how unique, how impactful this event was that he's talking about generational and generational and generational. And it just keeps on going. Let them know what happened. This, is, this was an invasion. This was a plague so deep. This is historical. And so Joel capitalizes on it. Uh, like, I don't, I don't, he's not going to apologize about it. I'm not apologizing for it either. But he, he gets it. And he says in verse 4, this is, this is what happened. The first set of locusts were the cutting locusts. And what they left, the swarming locusts came. And they ate that. And what the swarming locusts left, the hopping locusts ate. And what the hopping locusts left, the destroying locusts has eaten. Maybe you do felt like that in this last season. It's like wave after wave after wave. Well, well pay attention. Pay attention. And again, it doesn't always have to be something negative that grabs your attention. Maybe it's the birth of a child. We see that sometimes somebody has a kid and they're like, we're going back to church. I want to raise my kid in church. I'm like, praise God. Other times it's something negative. Well, I got I had a close call. I got in a bad car accident. I need to get back to church. Praise God. Whatever it is that, that got you back on, on track. And Joel is writing, of course, in response to this disaster as, as the word of the Lord came to him. But he's not the only one who speaks about this stuff again uh, Obadiah talks about it, Malachi talks about it, Ezekiel, these are, these are other prophets that lay to this, but we really get a, a full attention in Mark to the understanding of what the day of the, the Lord will be like. Now remember, Joel is pre-Jesus. This is old covenant stuff. So there were things that had to be done, sacrifices that had to be made. And so when this plague hit, it affected everybody. There wasn't, there wasn't anybody that wasn't unaffected. Everybody, all of society. And so he says, what's going to happen here is there's a call that you guys should snap out of it or mourn or, or get yourselves together or to focus in this. Util, utilize this. Use, utilize anything to get your attention back. Verse 5 says, awake you drunkards and weep. And wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. There's no wine. The wine wasn't all only for, for just drinking and getting drunk, but it was also a, a clean way to, to have a fluid inside of your body. There wasn't a lot of potable water always to drink, and so they would drink wine sometimes not to get drunk, but to, to just have something safe to drink so that not to have parasites in your body, but the drunkards, they were, they were weeping, there's no wine, the, the vines are gone, the, the locusts ate them all, they destroyed them all, it's gone, it's gone. So they're upset, but not just them, the nation has come upon, verse 6, my land, powerful and beyond number, its teeth are like lion's teeth and its fangs of a lioness. The locusts invaded with such intensity, it was like a lion, they just ate everything. Cicadas are strange, they're, they're weird Locusts are like just big grasshoppers. How many of you are scared of grasshoppers? Anybody? Yeah. My, da my daughter told me this morning she almost had a heart attack when a frog jumped on her foot this morning. Yes. Yeah, see, some of you are like afraid of frogs. I don't know. It's, it's just a frog. I eat frog legs. Anybody eat frog legs? <laughs> there we go. All the Florida rednecks raise their hand. <laughs> 
you're not bad. Tastes like amphibian. <laughs> no, there, but, but like one, you can handle something. You know what I mean? Like one, you get like a mosquito. You get like swarms of mosquitoes. You know those, those like nests of like little gnats? What do they call them, like noceums in Florida or something? I don't know what they're calling, like gnats, they call them gnats. But sometimes you just go out at certain times of the year, just walk out, there's just clouds of them. I'm like, what is that plague? That's biblical right there. Stay away from that. That'll eat your face off right there. I don't want to deal with that. It's scary. Seven says, it, it, it laid waste my vine, splintered my fig tree, stripped off the bark, threw it down. The, the branches are made white. It just ate up everything. Everything. These weird grasshoppers. Millions and millions of grasshoppers came in. Wiped out everything. We're talking about changing the price of food. Inflation. What? can't fix it. We can't fix this stuff. And so what do we do? We, we set our hearts right. We use it as a calibrating moment to get things right. He says, lament, cry, weep, mourn, get it right. Like a, like a virgin wearing sackcloth for the bridegroom of her youth. It's heavy imagery here. Sackcloth they would put on for the morning with like a, like a potato sack. It's just like, I'm, I'm so sad that, that, that all this is, is just crazy. That the grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. And the priest mourn the ministers of the Lord. So not only the drunkards and the nation and the land weeps and the farmers weep, but even the priests weep. You know why? Because they didn't have anything to bring to the Lord. This was, this was old, old, old Testament. So like, all the sacrifice, what do we bring to the Lord? What do we bring? Well, the good news is that we're living under a new covenant. God doesn't care about you bringing grain offerings. You know what offering he wants? You. He wants you. He wants your heart, and he wants it all. Romans 12, Paul wrote this. And we quote it often, but it's important to see it again. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. One thing says, reasonable act of worship. It just makes sense. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and by the testing that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. So when you start making decisions tomorrow and tonight and this weekend, is it good, is it acceptable, is it perfect? If not, it's got to go. Good, acceptable, perfect. Does it please the Lord? What? How, how am I going when to, when I say this thing in the next few minutes, how is it going to please the Lord? What is it going to do? How is he going to get the glory through this? Stand with me real quick, if you will, as I finish up the next couple verses. I got something I want to do with you this morning. 10 says, the fields are destroyed, the, the, the ground mourns because the grain is destroyed, the wine dries up, and the oil languishes. Be ashamed, O tillers of the soil. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine dries up, the fig tree languishes, pomegranate, palm, and apple, and the trees of the field are dried up, and the gladness dries up from the children of man. I want to stop there today. There's a lot in there. You're like, maybe you're sitting here today, and you're like, I have no idea what he was just talking about. <laughs> Real quick, just the overview. There was a horrendous plague of bugs that came and ate up everything and affected every person in society. Everyone. Joel is capitalizing on that moment because people's attention, they're now looking for, for something. They don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for, for a savior. And I don't know what you've gone through, and I, I don't know. I just know the world is shifting and shaking, and there's some sifting process going on. But you're here. Maybe you're here because it's the beginning of the year, or maybe you're here because you're in crisis, or maybe you're just here because you just love the Lord. Praise God. How are you? Whatever it is, you're here. You're here. No need to be scared. But as I said earlier, there is a 
huge need for you to be ready. A huge, paramount need for you to be ready. I want to do something today. I typically don't do it this way. We often have altar calls. But I want to do it like this. No, no eyes closed. Maybe, maybe you've had this, this, this time or whatever, and you're just half in, half out, playing games, doing the thing, whatever. Same kind of stuff we talk about week in and week out. But this, this, you're like, I just, like I'm hearing this, and I've heard it, and I've, I've felt the Lord, like the, the stirring of my heart, and something has to change. Something's, something's got to be different, and I, I just need help. So welcome to the club. I need help too. That's why I have accountability. That's why I have help. He's my helper, but I also have help. I have friends who hold me accountable, who hold my arms up when, when, I, when I'm tired, when I'm maybe not acting with the best attitude. And my friends come along, hey, man, you doing it right? So I, I just, I just want to invite you. How, how many of you want to want to take that step? And it's like, I know I, I need to take some next steps. Would you raise your hand in this place today? Cool, praise God, praise God. Now, I'm going I'm to ask one more thing. This calls for a little bit more courage. I'm going to ask for you to walk up here today. To stand right here and to proclaim and say, things are going to be different this year. Like the world might be shaken, but we will not be shaken. I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to let my roots grow down here. Come on, come on. You're not the only one. Look, there's people, these people are like saying things are going to be different this year. Things have to change. Can't do it. Can't do the same thing over and over again. It matters. It matters how we live, what we do, what we say. The day of the Lord is coming. Sometimes I think, you know, when we're we're out there. We're at the house, we're driving down the road, and we start thinking like, we're the only ones going, we're having, having these thoughts, and the frustration of life gets overwhelming at times, and it's like, nobody knows, nobody knows. Look, look. The devil's such a liar. He tries to tell you that you're, you're the only one going through anything. You're the only one that feels this type of way. standing here surrounded by people and every single one of us has the same need the need of a savior the need of, of, of anchoring deep down in the truth so whatever you came in here with today if it's, if it's God stuff keep that if, if it's the lies of the enemy that stuff gets put away today Look at the people next to you. This is, this is family. I know you have family, and South Florida is great, and the family, and all that other stuff, but this is like forever family. Like forever. Like I know some of you are like, I, know, I don't even hang out with my family. This is my family. I'm like, praise God. And some of you have, have cut ties with, with people that have, are, are lost in the world. You're like, I had to cut ties with them. I've, I've, I've sat with people and just like prayed with them. And they said, I've, I, I lost all my friends. I said, yeah, but you gained a forever family. <laughs> you gained a forever family. That's better. Now, let me spare you out the, the figuring out process. Everybody in here is a person. And people let you down. I, I do that sometimes. I don't mean to. I don't want to, but I'm just a guy. I know a bunch of you sent me messages this week, and I, land, I landed yesterday at like 7 p.m., and it was like, I've been trying to get in touch with you. And I'm like, well, I was in Asia. What do you want me to do? Sorry, I let you down. I don't mean to. We serve a God who will never let you down. Never. Not like he's pretty good, you can really count. No. Never let you down. He never changes. He never shows up late. He never calls in sick. He never screens your calls. <laughs> right? Never sends you to voicemail. He's always there for you. This moment matters more than you know. 
And I'm proud of, I'm proud of all of you. I'm proud of our church. I really am just proud of the Lord. I'm so excited about this next season as all of your roots are, are, are deepening. Even right now as I'm speaking, your roots are they're, they're going down deeper. Some of you are going to, you're going to get your evangelistic gift in this moment today. Some of you are going to turn into evangelists right now as we pray. Your friends that were lost, your family that's lost, you're going to begin to proclaim. You're going to be able to share the good news with them. You just couldn't muster up the courage before. But the Holy Spirit's going to fill you today and you're going to do that. Right where you at, would you just turn your hands like this toward heaven? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, there's no one like you. Lord, there's been times where we have wasted a tremendous amount of time. Some of us have wasted decades or years, but, but we're here now and this moment is in. And so we forget the past. Shame can, cannot have any place in our life anymore. We just live in victory. We just live in hope. There's, there's hope that's coming alive right now. So Holy Spirit, just dispense in this room. Fill these people. Fill us with your presence, Lord. Show us your glory today. Turn these gifts into these people right now. Evangelistic, prophetic gifts. Pastoral gifts, Lord, for our community. Because the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. These are the laborers, God. You are, you're doing your work doing your work right now and every one of these people matters so much open their eyes of their heart God open the eyes of their understanding right now that they understand first and foremost how much you love them how you have called them out of darkness into your marvelous light and how you are equipping them to do the work of the ministry that you are that you are pouring yourself into them that you are filling them to the overflow that they're going to operate in this overflow Lord, we love you. It's not by accident that we're here today. We ask for your help, God. We don't have, a, we don't have all the answers, but we have you. You are the answer. Lead us, guide us, teach us, comfort us where necessary, convict us where necessary, but don't let us leave here like we came in Jesus' name. Thank you for your tremendous work. Some of you have been battling in this room for a very long time. You've been battling. You've been battling. You've been battling. You've been battling. Listen, it's not your fight. It's the Lord's fight. Don't fight with the enemy anymore. The best way to win that fight is not to get in the ring. You let the Lord fight for you. He's already before you. He's already there. Let him do it. Some of you have been resisting calls to ministry, you've been resisting them. It's like, I don't know what it is, I can't, can't quite open my mouth. Listen, you, in your own words, ask him to help you right now. You ask him. Don't listen to my words. Just say, Father, help me to open my mouth. Give me a holy boldness as I proclaim your truth to my friends, to my family. Some of you are going to be instrumental in leading your family to the Lord in the next few months. Some ones that, that you thought... No, they'll, they'll never turn. They're, they're, too, they're too far gone. No, they're not too far gone. You're there to, to light up their life with the love of Jesus. Let's all pray this prayer together. Father, I believe. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that you're my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Be my Lord every day. Father, thank you for the work that you are doing. I thank you for the work that you're going to continue to do. Lord, as we leave this place, may you be glorified in everything that we say and do. As we pray the benediction in just a few minutes, that it won't be just words that fall out of our mouth, but it will really be the cry of our heart that we would please you. That we would live for you. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. And amen. Can we put our hands together? You guys can find your way to your seats. Hold on, I want to tell you a couple things before we get out of here. One, shine. Shine. How many of you ladies are going to be here? 
All right, wonderful. Now here's what I want you to do. I think in the video I heard back there, they said, bring your grandma. I wasn't sure about that, but I was like, did you say bring your grandma? Yes, bring your grandma, but you can bring your sister too, right? <laughs> Not just your grandmas. Um, bring your neighbors, bring your friends. This is a great invitation, a great night. I'm not supposed to be there, but I'm going to be there. And you guys take it easy on me. I know it's like the she-woman man-hating club that night. It's like a, it's like a fury. <laughs> also like a plague almost, but <laughs> for the Lord, of course. Um, no, it's going to be a ton of fun. Come show up. Be, come expecting. It's going to be incredible. Next Sunday, 530, we're going to be here for prayer. Also, be here for Sunday. Make, make a commitment every single day. It matters if you're here and it matters if you're not here. It always matters because you matter. I try to tell you that. I love you guys. If nobody told you that, I love you. Happy New I'm so proud of you. Can't imagine. I was sitting on the plane for hours and hours and hours and hours for the last two days. Literally hours and hours and hours. And I was just thinking some of your faces just praying for you, 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 praying for you. And uh, it was exciting. It was also praying for me because I was in the sky that long. And <laughs> nothing really to do. Somebody said, how do, you, how do you fly 30 hours? Well, you sit there until you get there. That's what you do. It's a long way, but I love you guys, and I'm proud of you, and I can't wait to see what God does in Homestead this, this year, this week, this month. You matter. Let's go make a difference. Let's pray our benediction together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you guys. See you soon. Thank you for joining us today, wherever you may be joining us from, whether it's South Florida or any other part of the world, we consider you part of the LifePoint family. I want to encourage you to go on our website where you can send your prayer requests or if you missed previous messages, you can also find them there too. You can also give on our website and it's because of your generosity that we continue to do this. We're so grateful that you've decided to stay connected with the life of our church. We hope this message inspired you. God bless you and have a great week.